Following on from yesterday's review of Bart's Nightmare comes proof that all licensed games are not always a quick cash-in of the license. So how did Krusty's Super Funhouse avoid the pit of licensing fumbles that hits the light of Total Recall, Untouchables? And more importantly, how did it become a better game than its brethren in The Simpsons Pool? Simple. It was never meant to be a Simpsons game. The original development title was called Rat Trap, and the fact that there was no guarantee that it would sell prompted the developers to make it great. A claim the publisher, looking for a quick cash in as always, snapped up the publishing rights and plastered Simpsons characters all over the product during the last phase of development. It was, in fact, the first Simpsons game not to feature Bart as the main character, but it wouldn't be the last as Bart Mania was still huge during the early 90s. Yet, looking through the original code and byte work on disc, I was pleasantly surprised to see it in many places. It's all intact, except for basically the Simpsons branding. Um, what's more curious about this? The whole thing feels pretty much a complete game in itself. You can play it from start to finish, uh, albeit there's no real music in the background. But there is nothing there to say this was a half-finished product. So, in essence, Krusty's Super Fun House was basically a puzzle platformer where you had to create a path to lead rats down to an extermination machine at the end of the level. Uh, once you did that, you move on to the next puzzle, and so on and so forth, until we eventually complete the game. Is it fun? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, it's fun, it's kind of forgiving, and it's a nicer take on Lemmings and that particular genre. Sure, some puzzles will require pretty good timing to uh, avoid the rats movements without going out of rhythm with each other and um, without the ability to fast forward like lemmings it can be annoying to have to wait for groups of rats to stroll gradually around the maze like platforming setup until you complete the level the platforming parts of the game just felt to be honest a little bolted on you know more as um, a gimmick to kind of flesh out and push the, the game's size to justify its uh, console price. With some enemies really, I suppose, just running around the levels and, and hazards that you need to avoid, but not really too taxing that, say, are, are going to break you off your stride without working out a solution. In fact, probably the most annoying piece is that some puzzles really have special blocks to break open uh, to unlock certain specifics in other rooms which had to be completed to finish stages. Um, those special blocks are usually hidden in the level and look the same as any other block. Um, which is kind of an annoying way of, of gate progression really. It's the same kind of aspect of randomly chucking in a boss during you know, a particularly bad 3D adventure that you know it's there just purely to hold you back and to test your skill set to make sure you're aware of everything that's gone on. But in the same time, it's a cheap and lazy attempt to enhance the game, almost forcing you to get good to a, a higher level before proceeding with another set of semi-par levels as the gradual skill set has slowly eroded in, in factions. Um, it's not something I'm really impressed by, and it's something that I've seen many games use as a, a cheeky alternative to flesh out the timescales. Um, and this isn't a great way of doing it, especially when there are better ways to progress a game based on a level of skill. Um, sound effects are uh, hit and miss uh, between the SNES version and other versions um, across all formats. And yet, while the music that has been put in is very... Simpsons within the background it's um, kind of repetitive after a few hours of play and some puzzles you are going to be sitting there for a fair few minutes before you work out a reasonable solution it's um, nothing really too annoying it's just grating I think is a better word and it's something to bear in mind if you do go around to playing this game um, 
But yeah, I, I'm really picking minor faults here and there. Crystal Super Fun House is a fantastic game on the SNES. It's one that's often overlooked in the collection, and it's one that really should be picked up and played in your core group of essential SNES titles. Um, playing on the best bits of Lemmings, really, in terms of its platforming genre, without overstaying its welcome. Um, and I can forgive Acclaim for doing what they did, yet putting the branding all over the game was an effort to sell more copies and in the same situation i would have done the same um they did see a great opportunity to tie out a great concept of a a new ip in a sense or a new genre um with a relevant brand to basically stem the tide of mediocre releases that had turned up partly within the game boy and partly within the next year um it's just I think really to summarise, while the game is great and it is going to get a very good review score from myself, it didn't help stem the tide of issues of that franchise in later years. And we'll touch upon those other reviews later. For me, this game simply gets a play it. It's as good as it can be and it can be no better but it's worth the enjoyment of the time you spend on it for more reviews like this check out that retrovideogamer.com for the latest news reviews retro footage retro reviews and everything else in between until then like comment and subscribe and i'll see you next time take care